Mr. Jerry Kelly has been given leave to make a statement on the Ardoin Twadell resolution, which fulfills the criteria set out in Standing Order 24. If others members wish to be called, they should do so by rising in their places and continuing to do so. All members called for will have up to three minutes to speak on the subject. I would remind members that I will not take any points of order on this or any other matter until the item of business has been finished. I call Mr Kelly. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I'm glad that uh, you accepted that. We, I think something over the, the weekend happened that uh, is quite significant and worth uh, a few moments of our time to uh, contemplate. There was an agreement uh, signed after, um, I suppose, many years of uh, disputes around the, the Crumlin Ardoin Twadell area, um, which allowed for actually. Uh, the Twadell camp to be dismantled, the moratorium to be put in, and for the Orange Order to complete their return period uh, from uh, 2013. It was uh, long sought after. Uh, the issues surrounding this, the fact that everybody in the area had affected uh, community relations, and I think the big story on it is the fact that there was agreement where people thought that this was an intractable problem, where there couldn't be an agreement, and also that it allows a conversation now to expand out from the issue of just parades, which of course entered into every single conversation around whether it was regeneration or uh, housing, whether it was uh, bringing uh, um, the, the uh, people into the area, whether it was tourism, whether it was um, bringing jobs into there and all of that. In the middle of every conversation had to come the issue of parades, and I think that in terms of where we have got, uh, we have uh, a great platform to move uh, forward. We had um, also another parade on the Friday night and a protest on the Saturday morning, which I'm glad to say uh, was peaceful also. Although I would have to say that I do believe that some of the scenes that are now up in the media and that around uh, Father Gary Donegan, a, a very highly respected uh, a priest uh, in the area, uh, someone who is not only respected as being a priest, but of course being someone who's been involved in peace and reconciliation work over a long period of time, uh, some of the people who give him uh, such abuse are also, of course, people who have a political agenda. Uh, some of the key figures in GARC who are also involved in other anti-peace process uh, political uh, parties. And we should, you know, you can't fool people on the ground so people know exactly who they're dealing with in terms of all of this. Uh, Father, Gar Father Donegan should not have taken that abuse. I took some abuse myself, but I'm a politician. Uh, that's what we are there for. We're there to take um, whatever criticism is thrown at us in whatever way it is thrown at us, and we should be able to take that, but to actually uh, focus uh, their attention on Father Gary Donegan, uh, I think, was uh, a disgrace. Uh, the same man was up every night for the last two and a half years in the area, trying to make sure that no more of our young people uh, would uh, get caught up uh, and maybe uh, enter the criminal justice uh, system in terms of that. If I could say a little more, I mean, Gary Donegan, as far as I'm concerned, is the perfect image of a worker priest. Uh, and I'm also member. glad that everyone, I'm also glad that all the parties are now supporting uh, the agreement and uh, Father Donegan, uh, perhaps they should have done it a long time ago. Call Mr. Doug Beattie. Mr. Speaker, uh, and, and, and I've joined in Mr. Kelly in, in welcoming uh, the feast, peaceful outcome of the Ardoin uh, Trudel uh, impasse. Um, it's proof, if ever proof was needed, that dialogue and accommodation um, really can bring us forward uh, out of the uh, abyss. I would like to congratulate uh, those people who helped facilitate uh, this arrangement. Uh, they did work tirelessly behind the scenes, uh, and we do owe them a debt of gratitude for bringing this uh, dispute uh, to an end. Um, we also have to congratulate um, those who were involved in the dispute for going that extra step forward and coming, coming away from it. Uh, and I would particularly um, tribute to uh, the Loyal Orange Order, who um, took that extra step, who stretched themselves uh, to find uh, a way out of this. And I'm not a member of the Orange Order, but I can see what they've had to do to get to where we are today. In the same way, uh, I can look at the Crumlin uh, and Ardoin uh, residence group, who had to deal with some considerable hostility um, in, in coming to where they are now. And we, we, we have to be thankful that they showed the courage to get them to where they are now as well. And it's interesting uh, to mention that this was brought about despite the Parades Commission. 
This is a group coming together. It was not the Parades Commission who facilitated this. Um, there were some pretty awful scenes, and I, and I will agree again with, with Mr. Kelly, with Father Gary Donegan, who I think showed incredible courage and incredible leadership um, where he was receiving verbal abuse, which looked like it nearly bordered on physical abuse. Uh, and we must look to people like this who stand up uh, and take these very, very difficult decisions. Uh, we have moved forward. We have got a way to go in the future. Uh, we should all now in this House um, look to see how we can make um, the situation better in Ardoin and Twadell uh, and possibly other places. But that's for, that is for, for, for the future. Uh, but I just have to take this moment to commend those people who brought about that uh, peaceful resolution. Thank you. Before I call the next member, can I remind members who wish to speak that they should continue to rise in their, from their seats? Call Mr. Nelson McCausland. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, like others, I welcome the fact that the Orange Brethren and the bands um, were able to return home uh, to Lake Anil on Saturday and were able to complete their parade. Uh, the Crumlin Road is one of the main arterial routes from that Lake Anil Valley Sillon area down into the city centre. It is a tragedy that that community around there, and indeed in a much wider area around North Belfast, has had to endure over a number of years the results of what was originally a bizarre, ludicrous, unwarranted decision by the Parades Commission to prevent the Brethren returning on uh, a 12th evening. It's a road that has been used by Orange Brethren and by bands and lodges over many years. In fact, there are records going back well over 100 years because it is the main road down into the city centre. The events on Saturday were indeed peaceful and that's to be welcomed. I'm glad that the Brethren have been able to return home. And I join with others in saying that uh, the behaviour of the uh, Gark people, uh, and some of them in particular, um, it was quite frankly appalling on Saturday. You saw their hatred, raw, naked hatred, that is very, very hard to comprehend. We saw there that hatred directed obviously towards those in the parade, the, the brethren uh, from the three lodges and the bands. But we also saw a hatred, which isn't a sectarian hatred, but the ongoing or outworking of a sectarian hatred in that they then turned them on uh, the, the local priest uh, in there, uh, Father Gary Donegan. And the scenes there are something that are really, really quite shocking. It says something, I think, about hatreds that need to be addressed in our society. Because you can have accommodations, you can work through many things, but ultimately we need to get to the bottom of rooting out and addressing that sort of raw sectarian hatred. Um, because it finds its expression not just in opposition to parades, we find it also in attacks on orange halls and that demonization of the orange order which has been going on for many years. So um, let's take the opportunity now to address those issues, tackle the hatred uh, that is there, that, that drives a lot of this, and hopefully uh, we can move forward to a shared and better future where roads like the Crumlin Road are truly shared. Call Ms. Nicola Mallon. Mr. Speaker, um, a lot of people entered uh, the weekend with a, a sense of nervousness and anxiety, uh, and certainly the SDLP is pleased that on both the Friday night and the Saturday morning, um, everything passed off peacefully. Uh, the three lodges adhered uh, fully, from what I could see, to the Parade Commission's determination. The illegal camp was very swiftly dismantled thereafter, and the protest was peaceful. But as many members have pointed out, there was a deeply disturbing moment when Father Gary Donegan was confronted by a number of very angry protesters. What I witnessed was appalling. It was violent. It was frightening. And I tried to intervene twice because I was truly appalled at what I was seeing. But Father Gary Donegan, and I can assure the House then, in the very heat of that moment, and subsequently, has responded with nothing but dignity. And you would expect nothing less. Mr Speaker, the first key milestone of this agreement was tested and it was passed on Saturday. 
All efforts must now go on focusing and ensuring that the remainder of this agreement is adhered to by all sides. It is right to acknowledge that there is a sense of nervousness about the level of expectation that perhaps both sides might have in terms of the outcome of this process and, in particular, the community forum that is a critical element of it. But while the SDLP acknowledges, and it is important to do so, the anxieties that people might have, we are very hopeful that North Belfast is entering a new era, that we can have a clear focus on the issues that are really damaging people's lives, mental health, training and employment opportunities, to name but a few. But it is important, Mr Speaker, that we do acknowledge that some of those anxieties and nervousness, it can be um, reassured somewhat by the fact that copies of the agreement have been provided to our First Minister and our Deputy First Minister, to the British Government and the Irish Government, to the Parades Commission and to the PSNI. Hopefully, acting as guarantors, that will help to allay some people's fears and we will have seen the last of uh, worries, anxieties and potential trouble when it comes to the issue of contentious parades in my constituency of North Belfast. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call Mr Trevor Lund. Yes, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Uh, like others, I welcome the agreement and the resolution of this long-running dispute. I would like to uh, pay tribute to the Loyal Orders and to the Crumlin and Ardoyne Residents Association for, dare I say, finally seeing good sense after two and a half years, and I believe something over £20 million pound worth of expenditure. But there were major sensitivities on both sides. We have to acknowledge that. And uh, an agreement that took a long time to come to fruition is better than no agreement at all. The, I want to also commend the, the, the police operation. I don't think anybody has actually mentioned the police yet. The PSNI have held a line up there for all that time, nightly, and sometimes it erupted, sometimes it didn't, but the cost and the, the, the resources that the police had to put into policing that, that area over that time has been massive, and they've done so with their normal restraint and their normal dignity and respect for human rights and uh, the, the tensions on both sides. It's actually been quite a good summer, relatively speaking, for parading, and I, I hope that as a result of this particular agreement, as others have said again, there may be an opportunity now to move forward and, and try and discuss these things in an atmosphere of calm and uh, cooperation rather than standoff. I certainly hope so. Um, like, like others, uh, I would utterly condemn the treatment of Father Gary Donegan. This is a man who has, again, as others have said, have spent night after night and day after day up in that area trying to as I understand, particularly to keep young people away from trouble, to keep them from perhaps getting a record that they shouldn't have. And he, he deserves better than to be confronted by a group of people abusing him in those particular circumstances. Also, I believe the Sunday Life uh, reporter, Chris Woodhouse, was roundly abused as well. For what particular reason, I'm not aware of. But as Mr Kelly said in introducing this, this, this matter. Um, <clears throat> we're politicians. We, we have to put up with this. I don't believe that a priest or a reporter should have to suffer that kind of abuse. And I'm glad to hear it's been condemned by all sides. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call Ms. Carl Nicola. I can't call you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I'm actually encouraged this t today to hear that um, everyone's had an opportunity, first of all, to give support to the agreement today, and indeed many did last week, and that was greatly appreciated, particularly by CARA residents and some of the residents up there as well. I think it's really, really important that when we use this opportunity to speak in this assembly, that we speak in one voice, particularly for an issue that's so important. I think every political representative, or most of the political representatives uh, over the last few years, despite their best efforts to try and get resources and facilities and services to their constituents in North Belfast, this has been an issue that was crying out for resolution. It's also been an issue that has been crying out for leadership. And I have to commend both CARA and indeed the Loyal Orders for using that opportunity and using that leadership to try and come to a resolution 
that we all now know, and it's public forum. For residents who live in Twadale Avenue and for Mountain View, are down in the deals and businesses, their quality of life has been greatly impacted by what was nightly parades and weekly parades. People going about their business, getting on with their lives was greatly impacted. But the message for me um, really is that we all need to try and support resolution where it's possible. And in order to, to provide that sort of leadership, even this morning using our words, I certainly know Nelson spoke about hatred. Maybe if Nelson's language had been a bit softer, and certainly joined him with the rest of us, delighted that you, you are supporting the agreement, but certainly just support it, but not support it without conditions, in terms of you know, making, making points. Um, it's a community that we all represent, that we've all got interests in, but we all need to show leadership on and to reach out to each other. We've got difficulties, we've got political difficulties, we've got ideological difficulties, but that, this is what this place is for. We need to make sure that our communities, our streets, our children, our grandchildren, ours, not mine or yours, ours, we're leading a legacy that is far better than the legacy that we have had ourselves. And how do we do that? We confront what happened on Saturday. It should have been Father Dar Gary Donegan or Brian who was with him or anybody else. I think even people who have the right to protest, who were with Gark, Certainly some of them will back off when they see that, that behaviour. But I'm glad this resolution has received the full support of this House.